Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Gary Marcinini. I'm currently uh, serving as uh, Dean of Sales, and thanks so much for uh, uh, coming to um, uh, check out this um, uh, short uh, uh, talk. Uh, my goal is to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, myself um, with the, uh, the uh, idea of, of uh, um, reinforcing how important questions are in our lives and how they, they really shape um, at least um, uh, some of the things we do. And, and so um, uh, I started out um, uh, uh, my uh, going life in um, sort of the Detroit area. I was born in Pennsylvania. We moved to Detroit and I grew up there. And um, in, uh, uh, in high school, I, you know, I just kind of liked all, all different kinds of subjects. Um, when it became time to go to college, um, no one in my uh, um, extended family had, had gone to college, so it was all kind of uh, new. And so uh, as a first generation student, uh, I, uh, I went to um, uh, Western Michigan University uh, and um, I was, uh, you know, kind of um, paid attention to both my right and left side of my brain, I guess you might say. Uh, I really loved the precision and logic of, of math, and I, I also enjoyed the, uh, the um, uh, interpretability and, and, uh, and, uh, of, uh, of art and, and humanities. So I ended up being a double major in uh, math and English, uh, just like a kid in a candy store taking as many classes as I could. Um, uh, when I graduated, uh, I got a job teaching uh, a math in uh, my old junior high school, which was uh, a whole different story uh, for another time. Uh, I also then taught in, my, in the high school I went to. Uh, but um, uh, the interesting question, uh, first important question in my life uh, came about in my first week of teaching when uh, the school bought uh, four teletype machines, put them in a basically a closet, uh, and uh, said, hey, you're the new kid here. Why don't you do something with these? And so uh, here I was with these four teletypes across from my classroom uh, uh, that uh, I had to figure out something to do with. There wasn't a lot of software in those days. This was hooked up to a timeshare system. And so most of it was just drill and practice kinds of things and um, really slow, noisy um, uh, uh, machines. And um, uh, so I ended up uh, thinking, well, you know, see if we can teach kids some programming. And, and so taught myself programming and, and started to teach kids that. Um, and um, the question that just bedeviled me was, why do these kids want to leave my classroom with you know 30 other of their friends around where we're talking about math and, and you know learning stuff and go into a closet with a clickety clackety slow old teletype machine and do boring drill and practice programs, seven times nine equals. And, and I, it was just befuddling to me. And, and um, of course, um, the more I thought about it and the more I studied it, um, I, you know, I learned that there were really sort of two factors related. One was the notion of kind of being individual, that they were getting some individual attention. It was just them and that um, uh, device. But uh, more importantly, it was interactive. There was a back and forth. It was an engagement. It was an active process. And so that became the driver for a lot of my curiosity uh, uh, for basically the rest of my life. What is the nature of this interactivity? Uh, and uh, so fast forward seven years or so, teaching at the junior high and high school levels, doing a master's degree, and then even entering the doctoral program uh, at Wayne State uh, University where I eventually shaped a dissertation to uh, address the question, could you learn your math better by writing a computer program to do your homework or just doing your homework? And so this was sort of um, based on some peer-based learning theories and um, the, uh, the, the, the idea that you would learn better and retain was the essence of the question. Uh, and so that was fun, and uh, you know, I eventually graduated and uh, decided and said, "Well, now what do I do?" And I was thinking I would, uh, you know, go into uh, maybe a math department or a, you know, a, a, an ed school someplace. And there was a job at the University of Maryland in the uh, information and uh, library uh, science program there. And so um, they convinced me that uh, I could make a place because they wanted somebody who you know, could sort of teach about technology and and um, information retrieval. 
Now, uh, one of the, this, uh, the important questions that had come up in my dissertation work was the difference between um, retrieving um, um, uh, knowledge from your own memory and regenerating uh, 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 knowledge. And so if you think about just a, a basic formula, is it better to just remember the formula and then apply it? That's very efficient. And of course, that's what we do on, in the workplace or um, to regenerate the formula. And if you, if you had to regenerate it, you really had to understand the underlying concepts. And so from a learning perspective, re, uh, uh, regeneration is superior, but from, a, from an efficiency and effectiveness and work pr uh, perspective, the retrieval was actually uh, uh, more effective. So this balance between retrieval and regeneration was another kind of question that drove my work. And that fit in just perfectly when I went to, to Maryland uh, to uh, teach in a, in a library and information science program because retrieval is in, in one of the key uh, foundational uh, issues in, in uh, the information uh, world. So um, uh, then I began more and more to uh, uh, hone in on what's the nature of interaction. Uh, we began to uh, 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 do what was called in those days human computer interaction uh, studies. Um, and um, I uh, very um, sort of quickly sort of uh, uh, focused on the notion that search uh, is really a, a learning function. And so that actually helps me distinguish between information retrieval and information seeking. Uh, uh, now, over the years there, um, uh, we did a lot of user studies. And so uh, there was a methodology that uh, we sort of uh, developed and applied, which uh, is basically you, you have a theory of design. Uh, and the way you test your theory of design is you build something, you build an interface, and then you test the interface in a systematic way, keeping all, uh, as many things uh, constant as you can. And through that testing, the results reflect back on your theory. And that's how you continue, you build theory over time, is to continue to look at different aspects of that. So many dissertations uh, of students of mine uh, sort of use that, that model. And um, things were, were going just great. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, Chapel Hill called and said, hey, you know, come on down, give some talks. And I didn't realize they were recruiting me. Uh, and uh, two years later, uh, you know, here I came in 1998 to SILS as a professor. Uh, and uh, really was working in the area of what's now called exploratory search. So uh, um, uh, the move here was, was, a, was a great one. Uh, amazing colleagues, a great university, um, uh, and um, uh, it, it, it was really uh, uh, the best thing for me, my family, uh, 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 to uh, make that move. Now, in 1998, when I got here, I started working on video retrieval, um, uh, digital government projects, uh, but really the notion of information and its impact on the world, uh, it became uh, the, the, the driving question. How does it change us? Uh, how does it change so social uh, uh, and political systems? And how does it change knowledge? And so over my time here, uh, more than 21 years at, at SILS, those are the kinds of questions I've worked on. Um, and uh, I'm fascinated by the question of who am I in cyberspace? And this has led to a, a theory of a fourth kind of information uh, of, of your um, your uh, your identity in cyberspace, which I think is different than the classic three kinds of, of information that typically get written about. And that leads me uh, uh, to um, uh, my, my, my time as dean. Uh, you know, when I became dean uh, 11 years ago now, uh, you know, I, I knew I had to give uh, my research, um, you know, kind of a second chair to trying to, uh, to deal with some of the larger issues of a school and a faculty and students and making them all work together. Uh, but I still care a lot about these three kinds of impacts. And, and this is really the basis for what um, uh, uh, I've envisioned as, as the, the Center for Information Impact that I hope can continue to get built out here. Uh, one arm of that is what's the impact on individual people's lives, what I, I call uh, the digital exposome. Second, what's the impact on, on, uh, on society and, and larger systems. That's our, our Center for Information Technology and Public Life. And then the third is what's the uh, impact on the state of knowledge of the world, the extant knowledge of the world. And that's what we call the knowledge trust. So uh, we will continue to develop those uh, threads 
of work uh, here at SILS, and I look forward to um, uh, working with, uh, with uh, many of you uh, in the years ahead. And um, thank you so much. Stay safe and uh, be well. Thank you.